Hi and welcome to Motorcycle Tourist. My name is Jesse. I'm Miguel. And today we're gonna review the Honda NC750X. We'd like to give a big thanks to Motos Tivoli in uh, Playa del Inglés in Gran Canaria for sponsoring these videos. Uh, we spent one week rummaging through all of their motorcycles, switching daily from this and that motorcycle and try them all out for this review. So a big thanks to them. Uh, if you haven't already been to Gran Canaria to drive a motorcycle, you're surely missing out and you, you should book your flight now. It is one of the best motorcycle destinations in the whole world. And if you do decide to go there and rent a motorcycle and uh, decide to choose Motos Tivoli as your rental agency, please say hello from us. Honda designed the NC750X to be the ultimate commuter bike and driving it, I can see why. It is very, very practical and very utilitarian in every way. Uh, if you compare it, for instance, to its little brother, the Honda CB500X, it's, it does share a lot of similarities, though a few things are very, very different. Obviously, there's more of everything on the NC750X than there are on the CB500X. But that's not to say that the NC750X is uh, automatically better than the CB500X. But we're going to compare this bike uh, against the Honda CB500X, the little brother, as well as other motorcycles in the same segment there, Buzz. But this is a very unique motorcycle because it's dedicated or specifically designed to be a commuter bike. And I don't know if there are any other bikes in this segment that are also specifically designed for that purpose alone. Uh, most other motorcycles around 750, 800 cc are going to be adventure bikes or sports bikes or uh, street bikes. Not a whole lot of them are so specifically commuter oriented. I'm going to show you this. This is very, very, very practical. Open up here. And there is a storage here. You can have your helmet or whatever. Okay. Very practical. I'm going to show you something very unpractical. And that's when you're going to gas up. Not that you have to gas up very often because the consumption is very, very low. But <laughs> you have to lift up this. Can and you that's, imagine? That's where a fuel cap is hidden. This is very unpractical. You are taking a long trip and you strap on your camping gear here. And every time you have to stop to gas up, you have to take it off. What did the Japanese engineers think about? Maybe they don't go camping. Maybe not. 
No, but Japan is a good place to camp, I think. But we've been driving it now for a while. This isn't the first time we've come here to drive this motorcycle. We've actually been here a few months ago to test drive it as well, and once before that as well. So this is the third time that we test drive this motorcycle. And we have a few thoughts about how it handles and what we think are good and what we think Honda could maybe do better with this motorcycle. You've been driving this uh, quite a bit during the evening and the twilight hours. What can you say about the lighting on this bike? I think the lights are not very good. Uh, you have a beam of light that's very narrow like this. So you see a lot on the sides, but it doesn't show much of the, what's in front of you. All right, so it's, it's very wide, yeah. but not very tall. No. So you have a sliver going like this. Right. Yeah. So I don't like that very much. It, li it lights up the side of the road really well. Hmm? So how do you find the, the ergonomics and the, the, the sitting position and the seating height? I think the, the motorcycle is very comfortable. And the seat height is quite enough for a person in my size, or even uh, shorter. Yeah, I've seen a lot of girls driving this uh, bike. Yeah. Especially in uh, Switzerland and uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the handlebar on the Honda is uh, it's a very wide and it's very high. Well, it's not high as in an adventure off-road bike, but it's fairly high uh, and fairly wide for a street bike, which makes for uh, very easy maneuverability. Don't you think so? I agree. Yeah. Easy handling, especially in town. Yeah, especially in town. So the seat on this bike is uh, fairly comfortable. Uh, it's wide, uh, you sit well on it, and it works pretty well for the first few hours. After about three hours thereabouts, it starts to get pretty stiff. Then you're going to want to stand up on the foot pegs, shift around, or uh, maybe even stop the bike and really, really take a slightly longer break. Uh, but for the first couple of hours, two, three hours, it actually works pretty well. The Honda NC750X has a single front disc brake and it's okay but it's nothing exceptional and the same goes for the suspension. For the intended purposes of driving around the city, doing commuting on highways and country roads where you can expect the asphalt to be good, it, it does its job but anything beyond that you're going to hit the limitations pretty fast. Uh, we did drive it across some really really coarse asphalt that was really broken and had a lot of wrinkles and dips in it. and and it didn't really soak up any of it. Uh, I felt really, really bumpy. And uh, there's another problem with the, the weak suspension and the brakes is that if you're gonna try and push the bike a bit, you're gonna hit those limitations. I mean, it's not a race bike. It's not intended to be a sports bike of any kind, but I did lose traction on it several times, cornering in the twisties here in Gran Canaria. And I also managed to lock up the wheel, so the ABS isn't all that fantastic. Now you can't really talk about the Honda NC750X without talking about the engine. This isn't your regular motorcycle engine, this is actually a car engine split in half and stuck in a motorcycle frame. So what would you say about this engine that Honda stuck in it? Oh, this is a unique engine. I don't think there's anything like it in the world. No, no, not that I know of at least. And, and uh, it's, uh, the characteristics of the engine is this low revs. Which very is low revs. Which is very nice if you are traveling, that we were talking about previously and, and then it's it has a lot of low end torque yeah a lot of low end torque. and that that's really nice to have in the city you know, by, when you're moving slowly and also on the twist is here when there is step hills in the steep mountain. hills yeah steep hills yeah then it's nice to have this low end torque mm -hmm. the engine uh, is quite fantastic i think i think that engine will probably last all life yeah it's uh, i read a magazine uh, motorcycle magazine where they put uh, they took apart a mention like this and then uh, after 50,000 kilometers they couldn't find any signs of wear mm -hmm. so it's a very economic motorcycle when it comes to repairs I think yeah, it, it was originally a 1600 uh, car engine that was split in half leaving them with about roughly 800 cc but it's really detuned and it only outputs about 55 horsepower which is about seven horsepower more than the Honda CB500X, which is a 500cc engine. It does have a bit more torque though, but the characteristics are very, very different. And driving this motorcycle, it more feels like a car. It doesn't really feel like a motorcycle because the, you, <laughs> you rev it and you hit the red already at something like 5,000, 6,000 revs. 
The transmission is also, as you would expect uh, from a Honda motorcycle, it's smooth and, and easy just as the engine. There's not really much to say about it except it's very easy to find the neutral gear, which isn't always easy on all motorcycles. Uh, Honda obviously is uh, legendary for its reliability and this bike is no exception. The uh, service intervals are what, 12,000 kilometers? 12,000. Yeah. 12,000 kilometers, and because you drive it at so low revs, you don't really rev this engine a lot. There's no point to it. It's not fun, it's not comfortable, and doesn't really do anything. Uh, I think you don't really need to change the oil in between those service intervals either. I don't think, think so either. No, I think you can get away with just a 12,000 service interval. The Honda NC750X is really, really easy to drive. It practically drives itself. I don't think I've ever driven a bike that quite drives itself the way that the Honda does. And for the intended purposes, then, which is in Honda's own words, to be the ultimate commuter, I think that's a pretty good thing. But what do you think about you know long travel and touring with this bike? I think it's possible. You think it's possible? It is. Uh, this, the riding position is uh, quite good for that. Yeah. And as long as you don't intend to drive very fast, it's also going to do it. Mm -hmm. I think the, somewhere about 100, 110 on the motorway is just about good. Yeah. You can probably go faster, but it's not going to be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But uh, I must say that uh, one of the things I like with the bike on driving on the motorway is that it's uh, stable. Mm -hmm. And also it's very stable from the side winds. Yeah. It's, uh, it can handle wind very well. We did drive it yesterday through quite a quite a storm, didn't we? Oh yeah. We had yeah. about 13 meters per second or 14 meters per second. That's uh, that's uh, closing in on gale force winds, and uh, this was uh, on a mountain road which was quite exposed, and we could really feel the uh, the motorcycle being punted back and forth through the wind. But the the Honda seemed to do quite okay with it. Yes, and uh, yes, I, I was surprised. I think that uh, a lighter bike. Uh, might have had a lot of trouble yesterday. Yeah, and a bike mm. with an even shorter wheelbase because yeah. it, Honda doesn't have that that long of a wheelbase. No, but it has to wait. It has to wait. Yeah. And the Honda is really, really quiet. It's a really quiet bike. It sounds really, really good. It has a low rumbling sound, but it's exceptionally quiet. When you ride it, you barely hear the engine at all. So you hear the birds chirping, you hear a needle falling on the carpet, and so on and so forth. Which some people might like and some might not. I think it's actually part of the commuter concept that Honda made. It makes it very, very comfortable to ride. The fuel economy on the Honda is absolutely otherworldly. We're talking about 3 liters per 100 kilometers or even less depending on how and where you're driving. And as far as I know, there is no other bike in the same segment that com comes even close. Uh, it has about the same fuel economy as the Honda CB500X, which is just a 500cc engine. Do you know of any bike that could compete with that kind of fuel consumption? No. Even the uh, Honda... 250 CRF consumes more than this one, I think. Yeah, it does? Yeah, or about. Well, that's, so that's really just absolutely crazy. Mm. I think the BMW series 700, 750, thereabouts, the GSS, they're around 3.8, 3.7, 3.9, thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any bike in this segment that has an engine this size and and uh, this much torque. But then again, if you look at it this way, uh, if you look at a motorcycle with the same kind of power output, around 55 horsepowers, then you're definitely looking at smaller bikes because this is a very detuned engine.
Mm. Yeah, you can have the same fuel consumption on a smaller bike with a similar horsepower, but then you won't get the torque. You won't get the torque, that's And the true. torque is what makes this engine so interesting. Yeah. Not the horsepower, it's not the speed, it's about the power, the raw power it can have on low revs. Mm -hmm. That's, that makes the, it makes a little bike a little fun to drive sometimes, mm -hmm. just a little bit. And just a little bit. It's not, it's not very fun to drive, but you can enjoy it. Yeah. Especially if you are like the torque part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to enjoy that, you have to go to the twisties, don't drive very fast, and just enjoying <laughs> pulling through the curves. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Kind of like on a custom. Yeah, like, there's a little bit of custom feeling over it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We've been driving this bike uh, for a few days now on pretty much every kind of road that's available here. Uh, we've been driving on highways, twisties, hairpins, good asphalt, bad asphalt, and we do have some conclusions about it. It states very clearly in the Honda marketing material that this bike was designed to be the ultimate commuting bike. And for that intended purpose, I think Honda really nailed it. Uh, it's extremely practical. You do have the uh, storage compartment at the front of the bike uh, and you have the easy to drive the low fuel consumption and all of the things and, and also the nimbleness in city traffic but also stable enough on highways to do those i think honda really nailed that part but on the other hand for any other purpose than just having it as a utility and just for a means of transportation i think it has a few shortcomings when you, for instance, compare it to the little brother, the Honda CB500X, I feel sometimes that the Honda CB500X has a bit more character, a bit more spirit. Uh, it, it, it forces you to work a bit harder when you drive it. This practically drives itself. And there, there's, there's a certain je ne sais quoi in there, in the recipe, that makes me feel that the, the NC750X, it's a little boring, it's a little dull. To drive it's not it's not the kind of bike that's gonna make you smile from ear to ear or sing in your helmet as he does when you drive it it's 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 just too practical it's kind of like when young boys buy a sports car they meet a girl they get married they have a kid they go sell the sports car and they buy a minivan and this bike is that minivan it's it's practicality embodied but it kind of lacks a little bit in the fun department. What would you say? Well, <clears throat> I've been driving both of them quite a lot. And uh, finally, I did decide to buy the 500X. And the reason why was that, uh, as Jesse says, I, 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 I was singing in my helmet. I don't do that on that bike. It's, it's, it's extremely good. The, 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 the CP500 it has more spirit, it's more fun, it's, uh, it's more limited as a bike, it's smaller, uh, this one is stronger, uh, but the other one is more, so much more fun. Mm -hmm. It makes you be laugh. Mm -hmm. Now, please don't get us wrong, I know a lot of people have these bikes and they absolutely love those bikes. And we think this bike is really good for its intended purpose, and you can absolutely go adventuring, go on tour in them and do all kinds of things. But we think that there are other bikes more suited for that purpose. And when looking at that, those other purposes, you can see that this bike wasn't really designed for it. So to summarize, to summarize this bike, the good and the bad things, the, uh, the good thing is the fuel economy, um, the practicality and the storage space. The, how easy it is to drive, specifically for beginners, or if you just want to commute, you, you're not looking for active driving, you're not a race driver or anything like that, you just want to get to, to work and back. Uh, in that case, it's very good. The rider ergonomics are really good, the creature comfort is really good, and the reliability. The, the bad things about this bike is the suspension is a bit on the weaker side. It doesn't really compete with uh, any of the other bikes in the same segment like uh, the bikes from BMW or uh, Triumph or uh, Yamaha. Uh, those, those bikes pretty much eat this one for breakfast when it comes to suspension, much like the Honda CB500X. Even though the suspension on this one is slightly better than the Honda CB500X, there's still 
kind of weak. Um, and also one of the bad thing is the placement of the fuel cap beneath the passenger seat, which is just really, really impractical if you have luggage on top of the passenger seat. If you're going on a long trip and you have tent or sleeping bag strapped to it, you're going to have to remove it every time you're going to refuel. And that concludes our review of the Honda NC750X. All in all, it's a pretty good and practical bike. Uh, has a few weak points, but uh, worth considering nonetheless. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you did not like this video, please tell us why. Hit the subscribe button for more awesome reviews and see you soon. Uh, pleasure for pleasure and for yeah. <laughs> Honda intended this to be the ultimate computers of fuel. So here we are again in Gran Canaria driving motorcycles, one of our favorite there. So we come to Gran Canaria, one of our favorite places to drive motorcycles, to do a review of some of Uh, the the <laughs> low end torque. It does that mm mm thing really good at the low revs. <laughs> when I'm driving the the CB 500X, I'm singing all the time. It, it's true. We have a calm system, and and we had to mute it because he keeps singing in the helmet. He doesn't sing very well either. The Honda NC750X is, uh, is really easy to drive, it handles fairly, fairly well, except for when you lose traction. So would you say that the only aspect of traveling is how fast it goes? No, but it's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Autistico. Maybe satisfied by driving in inside the speed limits, it will do it very well. <laughs> but, but, yeah? huh? rational people, people that, that can see what to get. So here we are again, back at Gran Canaria, one of our... <clears throat> speed limit. I thought it was a vague guideline of minimum speed. I've been doing it wrong all of these years. Uh.